Hi everybody, happy new year. I'm here with Cooper Knowlton and we're super excited to be joined today by Daniel Friedman, who is the owner and founder of Bindle & Keep, which is a successful, well-known bespoke suit business located in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, founded in 2011, Bindle & Keep has been featured in the New Yorker, uh, New York Times, and a feature length HBO documentary called Suited, which I have not seen yet, but I plan on watching um, this weekend. So Daniel, thanks for being here and talking about uh, a little bit about the state of your business and the, and the future for your business and other small businesses in New York. Thank you. Uh, thanks for having me. So maybe Daniel, you could start off by just jumping in and telling us a little bit about how the pandemic, maybe just a little bit more background on, on how the business operates and how it's been affected by um, a global pandemic. Absolutely. Um, well, uh, we are a custom suiting company that specializes in um, suiting up all people, all bodies, all genders, um, and all gender identities. Um, and like most custom clothing company, a lot of retail, um, especially in the suiting business, in the formal wear, um, summer is your Christmas. So you know, we were doing very well. We've had a number of good years. We were actually breaking record, uh, breaking records for gross revenues in uh, January, February. We knew this thing was coming. We had, you know, discussions about it, um, but it came fast and we were pretty much uh, shut down by March 15th. Um, we didn't reopen until January, uh, until about June 10th. Um, maybe a little later, that was um, uh, basically when, you know, the, the New York State sort of phased opening uh, allowed us to open. Uh, where we, we basically, from that moment until now, we've lost about a million dollars. So it, it, it's definitely impacted us tremendously. Mm -hmm. um, we have also lost a large number of our staff. Um, we made a public promise to not lay anybody off. Uh, we had um, enough cash reserves to carry us through, you know, the pandemic. Um, we still do, um, but uh, really, um, a, lo a lot has changed. It, it wasn't just the fact that, like, you know, we got our PPP. Um, and we burned through that pretty quickly. Um, uh, we made a public statement uh, to promise that we wouldn't lay anyone off and we did not. But what happened was um, people got employees, I mean, it was comfortable to be at home. Um, and we're not a company where people can work at home because we need to meet with clients. We have fixed or uh, made up some of that lack of FaceTime by doing virtual fittings. And we've kind of streamlined that process. But the truth is that we now have uh, half the employees that we did because people just don't, didn't want to come back to work. Uh, they didn't feel safe or they got used to uh, not, not uh, living in Brooklyn anymore. And so the prospect of coming back, a lot of people just had a change of heart about what the, where the direction of where their lives were going. And um, our business is a very stressful business serving others. Um, I think some, some of our employees thought that it would, they need to work on themselves a little bit um, and focus on that. Is, when you say that your business was affected, is, it, is your business almost all brick and mortar sales or are there also sales, um, you know, online sales for people? Right. So we do, well, we do virtual fitting. So those are when they're not brick and mortar. So I could do a virtual fitting here. Uh, they still take two hours in the initial fitting. We'll do that, on, we'll do that on the next Zoom. Yeah, yeah. For cool. um, the, so we do do that, I mean, but that only makes up about 5% of our okay. revenues. So it's still very small. You have to remember that a lot of the people who are getting suits, they have no reason to get them anymore. Right. Um, yeah. So yeah, I haven't worn a suit in honestly the last year. Right. So imagine all the weddings were canceled last year. Mm -hmm. uh, we do hope that this year, I mean, you know, it, if the vaccine uh, gets around the country fast enough, I mean, all, 
all the weddings that were canceled last year happening this year and all the weddings that are happening this year are still scheduled to happen this year. So it could be our busiest year, potentially. Um, we don't have the capacity to serve people uh, in the numbers that we did anymore because our, our, our staff is smaller. Um, but, you know, it's, uh, that's where we are right now. And we have a, we have a store in Philadelphia that we haven't activated yet. So it's sitting empty and costing money. Um, but we just don't have enough business and enough staff to uh, maintain a second store at the moment. How, how have you navigated the empty store in Philadelphia? And, and has that been difficult with the landlord? And No, we are the landlord. Oh, you are the so landlord. We own the building, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, that presents its own set of challenges as well. Right, so the bank, you know, just for debt service, we still have to pay rent. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it's an expensive, you know, the way we look at it is uh, if we have to just hold on to it for a year, a year and a half, or the way I look at it, um, it's sort of like riding out the market. Sometimes the market dips for a while. You don't know where you want to be in the market when it comes back up and you can't time it. So that's sort of how I'm looking at having an extra space. And also we doubled the size of our, of our Brooklyn space right before the pandemic. So, you know, our rent just for our Brooklyn space is $10,000 a month. It used to be less than half that. So one of the reasons why, you know, we're holding on to that space as well is because I do believe things are gonna change. And when they do, I wanna be set up to serve people instead of, you know, trying to relearn how to expand again. Are you, um, <clears throat> are you looking towards or hopeful that there'll be any kind of additional government intervention? Obviously there's gonna be a second round of PPP looks like if, right. if um, the Senate opens back up after it's <laughs> evacuated today. Uh, outside of that, are there, are there any other kind of government uh, types of intervention that would be helpful or useful to, to your store, to your business? I, I don't know. I, I know that um, when the pandemic hit, uh, we did apply for a number of grants um, and we didn't get anything. Uh, part of it was that I think the New York City or the New York State sort of small business, it just, it was, it was just too inundated. Um, the systems weren't up yet. Also, we were scared that by getting money from the state, it would uh, preempt our getting the PPP and we never got a clear answer whether that was okay or not. Um, so we knew the PPP was just more important and we kind of focused on that. Now going forward, I mean, we're, we, you know, we've adapted. So now we have less payroll um, and we've been kind of coasting along making, you know, maybe uh, a sixth of what we were making before. Um, and we're losing money, you know, our, our burn rate is a lot higher than our than what we make every month. But we can do this activity for at least another year before I myself burn out. Um, so that that's sort of, I'm not too worried. I think other companies, you know, we have no debt. Uh, we had a number of good years and we were wise with our money. Uh, we were very organic and how I say and how we, but it's really me and, and how the company grew. Uh, we didn't have a lot of marketing expenses. We had no marketing expenses. We didn't, we did our own, you know, our PR was organic. So we didn't uh, have to borrow a lot of money and sink money in um, like a lot of other small businesses uh, might have, you know, they might be in a little bit more trouble than we are in. We have a niche business too. So that's the other thing that we are niche. Uh, we have less competition. So clients who um, are still coming in and coming or coming to us regardless. And, and some beautiful things have happened. So before people would call us from Texas or they'll call us from Finland and they're gonna, you know, they would say, can I get a suit? Can I do a virtual fitting? And because of the complexities of our measurement process versus the complexities of how uh, careful you have to make suits for some of our clients because you know, some, some of our clients are very triggered by the silhouette that a suit can uh, cut for them. Um, uh, so we were always very uncomfortable having someone else 
virtually measure them while we guided them through the process. And now, because we do virtual fittings to survive, we've gotten pretty good at it and we've uh, streamlined that. And now people from all over the world are getting suits and that's kind of fun. Interesting. Are there any, are there any mistakes that you made over the last year or, or big learnings that come to mind that you've um, just sort of as a, as a small business owner, things that you've picked up during this crazy time? Um, that's a good question. I, I, I mean, look, we, we did a number of things during the pandemic. Um, we spent, we, money making masks. Uh, we spent about $25,000 making free masks uh, early pandemic because people really needed them. Um, you know, I wasn't sure if that would be a mistake and I'm really happy we did that. The, uh, the goodwill that we earned from doing that uh, is probably still um, paying us back. And it felt like we were contributing something when, when you know, people were really dying. I mean, people still are really dying, but people were, couldn't go outside. You couldn't get a mask anywhere. No one knew what, what was going on. So we were glad that we contributed to the good and we rolled up our sleeves and we used our capacity and our factory to manufacture things uh, to help people. Um, so I, I haven't learned, I haven't been burned yet. Um, I think that, um, you know, we didn't lay anybody off and we basically kept everyone on payroll uh, with, the, you know, hoping that when things open up, we would keep everybody. Uh, that might have been a small mistake in the sense that people did stay on payroll and then it was time to come back to work. There were a number of people that um, decided that they would rather, you know, live outside of Brooklyn and didn't want to come back um, and then just jumped on to, um, uh, you know, unemployment. Um, but in terms of lessons, I think if, if I can impart a lesson or a lesson that I learned is you really got to be careful with your money. Um, you know, it's really easy for a company, especially a new company to live hand to mouth. Um, you sort of want to get out of that situation as, as early as possible and grow slower. Um, there were opportunities, you know, there were times when we had opportunities to take money um, or to burn more money in order to grow quicker. Maybe it would have been great for us, but I'm really glad we didn't do that looking back because um, you know, now it would be, that would make it a very stressful time. I think that because we had money, um, we were able to not be stressed during COVID. I mean, I took it as like a, a long vacation that I needed for a very long time. Um, and I, uh, you know, I hate to say it because I know it wasn't the same for a lot of people, but those were probably some of the best months of my life. Um, I bought a house, I was living in the country. Um, and it was the first time in my life where there was actually, or first time since founding the business where there was nothing, nothing could be done. So, you know, you just had to take time for yourself and enjoy the quiet. Um, you know, now it's kind of a slog being back at work a little bit, but at the same time, it's like, you know, you gotta make a living. Um, but, you know, it, for us, again, it's like niches. And I, I assume that you guys are also sort of niche. It helps to be niche because um, unless that niche disappears really quickly and that can happen, um, it gives you a little bit of a buffer um, because the your market is finding you. Um, so we don't have to keep going out and reinventing ourselves. Uh, the market sort of, you know, looks for our niche and then comes to us regardless of the situation. But obviously it's much quieter right now. I mean, you know, we were pulling in, there were times when we were pulling in $175 a month in revenues and then, then we're pulling in like 30. Right. You know what I mean? It's, it's certainly a different experience. Um, but it's also... Um, it is what it is, like knowing that it's not just us. Yeah, I think it is what it is, is the, is the best way of putting what's been going on, what's going on, what will go on, in, at least in your future, hopefully not the, the long-term future. I just had one more question because, you know, in, in reading some of the articles about your business online uh, and even hearing you talk now, it sounds like the experiential factor is a big part of your business going in, you know, the two-hour fitting consultation, the 
like a, either the luxury experience before you actually get the suit. It sounds like you're you can, you've somewhat successfully converted to a virtual version of that. Um, is that something that you could see being kind of a, a long-term part of the business or is the idea to eventually go back to entirely in-store um, experience type you know, uh, work for, for the consumer? So I think that we are gonna turn into a long-term experience. It's, it's, a, it's hard because people um, expect a different experience and then they have a Zoom experience. Um, we are experience, you know, we would love to, we can do it now going forward. Now we've learned how to do it. So we're offering that, we put it up on our website. We don't expect to take that offer down. Um, the problem that we're having right now, and this is, uh, you know, we've hired a consultant, actually I have a meeting with them today. Um, we are having a hard time hiring. So while we have ample uh, financing, you know, just in terms of, we've got a good bank account. Um, uh, we are, the hiring process in order to, to grow back up, given our niche business is because we're so niche, it's very difficult to teach people exactly how to do what we do. Um, that requires a lot of face time. So that would mean that they have to come to the office. I have to be in the office and we have to do the training. And we're finding that though the market, there are a lot of people who, uh, uh, you know, need jobs right now. Um, it's very difficult to find the right people. So we're just treading water faster. Unfortunately, I wish I can hire eight people. It would be great. And then I would move upstate and we can grow the business. But what we're finding is that it's very, very hard to teach people how we do what we do. Um, and so now when we, we can grow, and we want to grow and we want to hire, we can't. Um, and that's like a really frustrating problem to have. No one graduates at the top of their class in home ec and then says, okay, well, now I know how to put, now I know how to talk about gender and suiting for people who have you know, certain sensitivities. Um, there's no training that someone can have both in the hard and the soft skills that they can then jump into this position. It's extremely niche and it's very, um, we sort of like evolved with it. And so uh, we, involve, we evolved, our company evolved with sort of navigating or chartering, charting how to do this. So we didn't learn it from another company. Um, so people come in, they can't even come from another menswear store because there's such sensitivities. 95% of our clientele are women or you know trans people. So um, it, it's, uh, it's not just having the sensitivities. It's not just having, um, you know, a love for suiting. It's hiring someone who then also understands how to answer people's questions who've never worn a suit before with, uh, more than, you know, with a high degree of confidence, um, to convince someone who's quite smart, but also has no experience that you're going to help change their life. That's a, a hard thing to do and a hard thing to hire. Yeah, I think hiring, training, uh, that's challenging for every business right now in different ways. Um, and I don't know that's gonna be a, a problem that's resolved in the near term because I think, you know, we're not going back to 24 seven in-person hiring or 24 seven right. training. So I think we're all gonna have to kind of navigate together how to, how to get through that different businesses are obviously impacted in different ways. But. Right. Well, there's, I mean, I don't know if you've spoken to other businesses, but a lot of small businesses, a lot of the people that I know just from clientels, my, my clientele who have client who have companies, um, a lot of people are just thinking about just shutting their businesses down. And it's not because that they can't survive. It's they're tired. They're mm -hmm. burnt out. Um, and you're just like, you know what, like, do I want to continue to do this? Like how much, what's your runway to then find something else? A lot of people are just, you know, it's not an easy, um, you know, it, COVID has changed so much for so many people, including what people's priorities are. And a lot of people just don't want to do the hustle anymore. Um, and the small business, it's all hustle. Yeah. All right. Well, on that, on that note, 
<laughs> on, that, on, that, on that uplifting note, <laughs> right. <laughs> all businesses are dying. I mean, it's not like, look, it, you know, I don't, I don't know exactly what, but I do know, like, even like my laundromat, you know, like the guys at my laundromat are just like, yeah, you know, it's hard. It's hard. No, what, you're, what you're describing is certainly what we're hearing from a lot of businesses. Certainly, we work with a lot of businesses in the hospitality restaurant industry. I mean, restaurants in New York are getting crushed, right? There's no, right. There's no getting around that. And, and I think a lot of people are making that, that determination. And, you know, sometimes it's, it's the rational one, right? To scale back, to take a step back and ride out the storm in different ways. Cause you're right. Like you can only fight so long and it's, it's exhausting. And, um, you know, hopefully, hopefully we're there, there are better days around the corner and, um, we've seen the worst of this, but who knows? Yeah. yeah. I really, I, I really feel sorry for those who, um, you know, they're, if they're, you know, with the tight margins, this is a very scary place to be. I really do. Like, I think about it a lot. Um, you know, people, there are companies that have $10,000 in the bank and that's it. And they're saying, okay, how long can we do this? Um, it's a scary place to be. And people there, I know people who can't pay their employees. And, you know, that's a problem on a legal front too. I mean, it's all, it's just a bad place to be. Totally. I mean, yeah. All right. Well, I very but much. We'll, we'll all get through it. I'm confident. I mean, my company will survive. Absolutely. Um, and I think, uh, I think that um, we'll be looking back at this two years from now. And I think we'll, you know, we'll be saying, wow, that was crazy. Just like 2008, when the market completely crashed, and then by 2011, 2012, we were seeing record changes. Um, I think that this is very much like that. I think people are excited. I, I read something last night that said that the travel industry has gone crazy. Um, you know, people, the hotels are booked up now a year in advance completely because people are anticipating things getting back to normal with the vaccine. People are going to be getting married. Businesses are going to recover. People will be happy to go to restaurants um, soon because it's going to be a mark of survival beyond just you know um, that they want to eat out. Well, there's the uplifting note to to end things right. on. Um, mm -hmm. Well, we appreciate you taking you know a really honest look at your business. I think it's it's helpful for other businesses to kind of hear what fellow businesses have gone through and how they've navigated the storm. So we appreciate your your candor and your transparency and um, look forward to chatting again soon when, when things get back to normal. Awesome. Thank you guys. Thank you. All right. Take care.